Hello friends, in today's session I uh, will be talking about the basics of jet fixator for proximal tibia fractures. A lot of residents have asked me the technique of jet fixator and how it is useful for proximal tibia. The good thing about jet is that it is very light fixator, it is very handy set, it is not a cumbersome apparatus like most other fixators. Whole of the implant set can be assembled in a small box and is readily available and you can construct your own designs depending upon the fracture patterns. You can use it in all the bones that are subcutaneous in location or those have a good amount of safe zone available for fixation of pins or k wires cost wise also it is not expensive it costs only a fraction of amount that is required for plating purpose so what is just so the jazz is short form for joshi external stabilization system it is a k wire based fixator which uses the multiple k wires that are assembled together to create an assembly with rods and clamps to create a fixator. It is mainly used for small bone fractures like wrist fractures, hand injuries, foot injuries, but it can also be used for metaphyseal fractures that don't have any major extension in the diaphysis. Why? Because it is a light fixator. The stability of the fixator depends upon its hold in the diaphysis. If the diaphysis is not intact, it is combinated or there is extension of fracture in the diaphysis, that means then the fixator stability is going to be compromised. So basically it has to be used in small bones or it can be used in major bones also but those need to be confined to the metaphysis or or by maximum the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction if there is an associated diaphyseal fracture then the fixator should not be used because it is going to give a compromised stability that can result in failure so it can be definitely used for proximal tibia fractures or tibial plateau fractures even those which have articular component but it should be preferred only in those circumstances when you are not able to put the plate because of the compromised skin like in open fractures, extensive soft tissue injury, degloving injury, when there is compartment syndrome, there are blisters over the skin which are unlikely to heal in next 2-3 weeks because that is the time window when the fixation of these fractures should be done with or if otherwise the fracture is going to unite in a male reduced position and will create a problem later on. A hybrid external fixator is one option but I told you bulky external fixators are often cumbersome, are not well tolerated by the patient and are very heavy. So the light fixator that is just fixator is one option. Option for them. So how is it helpful for proximal tibia fracture? Whenever the skin is compromised, you need metaphyseal stability and the diaphysis part is intact, then definitely the jazz fixator is a helpful alternative. So what is the principle for fixation? So the conventional bridge plating principle which we use for the proximal tibia fractures has the absolute stability in the articular region and the relative stability between the metaphysis and diaphysis region and there are three or four locking screws that are confined to the diaphysis. Similarly, the jazz fixator also relies on this concept. It provides absolute stability at the articular side, that is the periarticular region, and provides relative stability between the metaphyseal region and the diaphyseal region. You see there is scope of micro motion in this area. It is going to heal by relative stability just like the MIPO plating. So the principle will remain same. So we all are aware about tensioning of KYS in Elizaro fixator. In Elizaro fixator we use very thin KYS or we call them bayonet wires which are very thin and flexible. But what we do? We provide tension to those wires. So the, the mechanism by which the Elizaro wires work is known as trampoline effect. If the weight is put on a flexible wire, the weight is going to move the wire downwards. But if we tension the wire, suppose if the wire is held at this fixed location, like in the circular ring with the use of a nut and bolt, and then pulled away in the opposite direction, then it's going to get tension. And this tension will result in increased strength of the wire. And it will be able to hold the weight without getting bent. So, the tensioning will provide stability to the fractured fragment in case of Elizaro fixation. However, the jazz fixator is a bit different. Here we use thick K wires depending upon the profile of the bone. If we are fixing the fractures in the hand or distal radius, then 1M or 1.5M K wires are sufficient. But in case of proximal tibia, we are going to use thick wires that are of 2mm or 2.5mm diameter. So they are going to be thick. Suppose this is a bone stock. And we have placed two K wires, thick K wires, through it. Now the bone can still slide in this direction or in this direction. So the stability is not good. But there is a mechanism called pre bending stress in jazz fixator by which we can provide stability to the bony fragment with the help of K wires. What we do, we either distract the K wires in opposite direction on both the sides or compress them on both the sides. So there is a bent at the junction of the bone and the wire. 
so what will happen now you see the span of the wire is higher here and here also now the bone fragment can't move in either of the direction because the space here is higher and the bone stock in between the wires here is small so it cannot move either in this direction or in this direction so automatically by bending the wires in opposite direction we are actually providing a tensioning mechanism which is providing stability to the bony block so we can either distract the wires or we can bend the wires so that the space here is reduced either way the bone fragment is not going to move in in either of the directions so that is the mechanism of stability of these wires so what we do in this jazz fixator we create two assemblies one is for metaphysis we actually lock the wires in this pre-bent position so this whole unit remains inherently stable then we create another assembly in the diaphysal region in the similar manner like we did in the metaphysis we provide the bending stress to the k wires then lock them with the small clamps to create a diaphysal unit and then we connect the diaphysal unit to the metaphysal unit with the help of multi-planar rods like in postromedial part then postrolateral part then anteromedial part then anterolateral part or we can place in anterior part also and we can place in posterior part also using some rod extension so first step in every fracture either you are plating or you are putting fixator is to reduce the fracture properly here when the skin is compromised we can use small stab incisions percutaneous techniques to reduce the fracture for example here you see there is a medial condylar split or you can say there is medial column and posteromedial column involvement and on the posterior side you see again this is posteromedial column and on the lateral side you see there is depression you see there is depression which is also seen in this 2d part which needs to be elevated and so there is involvement of the lateral column and some part of the posterolateral column is also involved which is actually the extension of the posteromedial column only so all columns are involved in this fracture so what we did we reduced we using small joystick techniques we reduced the medial condyle and spanned with antero posterior k wires and lifted the depression with the help of a punch so that the depression remains stable and we placed a raft screw under the depressed fragment so that it doesn't fall back now the metaphysis part was also combinated so to add stability to that we lagged the wedge fragments so next step is to create a raft of 3-4 k wires which will span whole of the metaphysis so this is a saw bone and these fragments represent the reduced fracture the lateral condyle and medial condyle are reduced and this part shows the metaphysical combination and this part shows the articular part which is well reduced now you see when starting from the fibular head whole of the proximal tibia anterolaterally anteriorly and medially till the posteromedial border is having a safe area for wire placement you don't have any major neurovascular structure passing in this area so you can start first wire from the fibular head then you can exit from the anteromedial side then you can pass another wire from the posteromedial border that can exit from the anterolateral side so we have to create a raft of multiple wires in this way which will be supporting the subcondyle bone of proximal tibia so the first wire will be going through the fibular head like this and exiting anteromedially second wire will be either transverse wire or anterior to the fibular head and exiting the medial side and then other wire you can place from the posteromedial border that will be exiting anterolaterally. You can use multiple other wires also if you want to create more stability. More wires and more will be the stability. So once you are done with your wires, you need to connect them to each other using clamps and curved rod. You see, this is a smooth curved rod. It is very helpful when you are sliding this wire through the clamps. It is very easy to slide. It is difficult to slide the curved rod through the clamps. I prefer the smooth rods for passing through the clamps. If the smooth rod is not available, you can create your own smooth rod using a long k wire you can just cut the terminal part of the k wire bend it according to the curvature of the proximal tibia then slide that wire through the clamps over the already placed k wires and once that is done then you have to tension these wires i've told you in earlier picture you'll have to tension by creating a bending force you can either converge these wires or you can diverge these wires and in that position you have to tighten the clamps so in ultimate assembly these two wires can either be converging or diverging suppose a curved rod is short you are not able to pass till the terminal part so what you can do you can just tighten this curved rod till here and you can create a separate assembly for this wire and this wire using another small rod or you can use a k wire also and once that is done then you are ready with your metaphysical assembly if you want to give more stability you can create an additional network of wires in the lower area i mean to say you can pass wire from here or here or here or here at a lower level and you can connect this assembly 
the already created assembly to the newer assembly that you will create in the lower part. So no more wires, more stability. So it depends upon your fracture pattern, what kind of stability you want. Only thing you need to be careful, you have to pre-bend the wires so that there is adequate amount of tension on the, in those wires, which will provide stability to whole of this block. And second, you need to add more key wires if you want more stability. So ultimately you will be ready with this kind of assembly. Then you have to create a diaphyseal unit. In diaphyseal unit, you can put three or four K wires, and these also need to be 2.5 millimeter wires because I've told you in thicker bows, the wires need to be thicker so that they get good purchase and they provide good stability. Then you need to create a Z assembly in this part. This anterior limb will be connected to the anterior part of the ring that we have created above. And this posterior limb will be connected to the posterior part of the ring that we have created above. Usually the Z rod is available, but if it's not available, you can use two L-shaped rods to connect these K wires with each other. You can use the two L-shaped rods to connect these K wires with each other using the multiple clamps. The clamps are like this. One hole is there for K wire and another hole is there for placement of the rod or you can use smooth rod also or you can use the rough rod also. The rough rod actually provides better holding strength at the wire and rod junction. So rough rod should be preferred whenever possible but it's not easy to slide the rough rod in the proximal part so smooth rod can be used. Once you have created the Z shaped assembly here and on the medial side also then you need to tension the wires then tighten the clamp. See here we have converged the wires on both the sides. This part is also converged, this part is also converged. This will provide strength to this assembly and the wires will have get better hold in the diaphyseal area. So you see this unit is convergent while this is divergent just to provide stability to, to the wires in the diaphyses. So we have followed the principle of tensioning as we have discussed earlier in form of pre-bending of the wires. This is another special type of clamp called fish mouth clamp. Suppose you have already placed the ring assembly proximally and you want to add one more wire but it will be very difficult to slide this clamp again through the curved rod and the k-wire. So what you can do, you can just pass the clamp through the k-wire. This mouth is already open. This can be easily slid over the curved rod and thus the wire can be attached to the curved rod without the use of the regular clamp. So next step is to connect the metaphyseal segment with the diaphyseal segment as we had earlier discussed. So this anterolateral prominent arm of the z-assembly can be attached to any wire of the proximal assembly that was exiting anterolaterally. This posterior lateral part of the Z-assembly can be connected to the posterior part of the ring that we had created previously. And similarly, anteromedial and posteromedial parts can also be connected to the same plane K wires or the terminal part of the curved wires that we have created proximally. So ultimately, the assembly will look like this. You have connected the posterior part to the posterior part, anterior part to the anterior part. One extra rod can be attached here between the anterior limbs of the Z assembly. This rod will have a clamp in between. Through this clamp, you can pass another unicortical K wire, thick unicortical K wire inside the diaphysis. How will this help? Actually, with time, the wires are going to loosen up inside the diaphysis to some extent and because of that the whole of this assembly can actually migrate either medially or laterally so this centralizing k wire will prevent the migration of the assembly in either direction this will keep whole of the assembly central and equidistant from the bone as we have placed during the surgery so the assembly will look like this when seen from the front and it will look like this when seen from the sides. And one more thing, we had talked about the number of K wires to add stability. What you can do, you can add extra rods also. So you can use extra ring, extra curved rod proximally to provide extra stability. And you can connect the posterior arms of the Z assembly through a curved rod posteriorly also. So it this rod is actually behind the calf region. It is a curved rod which is connecting the posterior arms of the Z assembly that we have created in the diaphyseal part. Once you are done with all this assembly, you need to check the C arm. And if you are satisfied with the alignment, then you have to tighten all the clamps that are connecting these rods between the proximal and distal unit. If you want to add some velgas or varus, then you can you can loosen the clamps and after getting good amount of reduction, you can tighten those. If your fracture is going into valgus, then you what you can do, you can add some amount of compression on the medial side and then tighten the clamps and you can add some amount of destruction force on the lateral side, then tighten the clamp. So you see in this assembly, we have actually created two layers of the K-wires. One is here proximally and one is slightly distally to add more stability because there was extensive combination in this zone. So we wanted the fixator to be more strong. Therefore, we have added multiple layers to this fixation and you see this structure this is nothing but the distractor 
or compressor unit. With the help of this unit, you, you can actually control the angulation at the fracture side. If the slope is not correct, it is going in an extension. What you can do, you can just compress this unit so that automatically the fracture will get slightly angulated and you will be able to reduce the slope in a better manner. But if it is going in opposite manner, you what you can do, you can place this distractor assembly on the anterior side and then tighten it so that the slope gets reduced. Now coming to some examples, you see this is a compromised skin. This was the fracture. There is a depression and medial condylar split as seen in the AP and lateral radiographs. And there is some amount of metaphyseal diaphyseal combination also. So here what we had done, we had provided a metaphyseal assembly of the K wires, then attached this assembly to the diaphyseal unit that we had discussed earlier. And we had to add some screws here and here, some leg screws to hold the wedge fragments here and here because there was extensive combination and the fixator is a light one. It may not provide adequate stability for such a long fracture. So some kind of extra fixation needs to be there which was provided with the help of leg screw. So this was the skin after few weeks when healing occurred and this was the follow up radiographs in which everything got united properly. This was the post implant removal. We had to remove the medial side screws also because they were quite palpable but lateral was not needed because it was already buried inside the bone. And the patient was fully active and his functional activities were fully restored. His new movements were also adequate and there were no complaints related to the function. Thank you.